Okay, I'll try. Tell me when it starts. Yeah, I just started it. Okay. Good. My name's Jack Early. We're right here at the shores of Cedar Lake. This is absolutely my favorite lake in Algonquin Park. One of my favorite places in the world. And as a kid, we used to come up from Source Lake in the southern part of the park. And we'd come up here to get our, uh, what they called a wanigan. And on the train, they would bring the cans and boxes and stuff like that for the second half of our trip. And it was very exciting because we got to go over to the store and meet the old guy that had been there for 50 years. And then there was a group uh, eating house where the uh, lumbermen and the railroad guys worked and for a buck a piece you could go in and get breakfast there. And it was just fabulous. And some of the hardest paddles I've ever had were on this lake but all so many good memories and I really envy, envy's the word. I told my wife last week I don't envy or never known envy. Now I know envy. Seeing Russ go out on this, leaving me behind. And that's my Aww. story. Oh, it's true. I met Jack in August of 2020. I had arranged for his wife Peggy to shuttle me and my gear from Ox Tongue Lake, just outside the western boundary of Algonquin Park along Highway 60, to the village of Brent on Cedar Lake. There I would launch stage two of my journey around the Minas Link, a 420 kilometer canoe route around and through Algonquin. That, of course, is another story for another time. As for the shuttle, at the last minute, Peggy was called away on family business, and Jack substituted as my driver. Jack's reputation preceded him, and I'd wanted to meet him for some time. You see, Jack Hurley is one of the very few remaining craftsmen building and repairing cedar canvas canoes. For 35 years, he built and repaired every canoe used by Camp Pathfinder on Source Lake in Algonquin, as well as other camps further north. So needless to say, I was pretty thrilled to have the opportunity to talk with him for a full three and a half hour drive, and even more excited to be invited to his shop once my trip was over. But the actual experience and the impression it left on me were so much more than I could have imagined. I honestly don't know if any of what I experienced will resonate on film. I only know that when I pulled up at his shop the day after I finished my trip, I was just like a kid again, positively giddy with excitement for my tour. Fortunately, Jack had no problem dominating the frame. This is my environmental display. That's possibly the most famous picture ever taken by a human. That was the that was the space, that was the oh, yeah. to the moon before the that. actual landing. And when they came around the dark side of the moon, that was the picture they took. And I think every human should have a pin on with that picture in recognition of how serious the... The undertaking was and what the uh, difference it, maker it's been in. My, some of my things, that's a thwart that says no vaccine for climate change, no planet B, agitate now. We're a very, and look uh, at the canoe-shaped sign up. What's that from? This is when my son got married out in the field out here. His wife came up a month before the wedding and she saw that old canoe frame lying behind the shop. So she stapled screen, house screen, and then an old canvas and her girlfriend's an artist. Those were all the items on the menu for the wedding. And That's that, amazing. And that hung in the tent. Do you think the next owners of the house will want to keep that with the shop or not? I sure would. Holy yeah, cats. You're kind of odd. No. Yeah. Anybody would want all this. Look they, at this. And last year, they uh, made this a heritage building, even though it's not that old of a building. Look at that. But in recognition of all the uh, canoe, canoe buildings that are, are no more. Now See, what, these shoes are all as they wear out, but they made a nice frame for the uh, heritage plaque. 
And over here, <laughs> these these are all my pants. Oh, today. good We're lord! Out. And I figure I've got two more pairs of pants in my career. These are <laughs> these are actual Civil War pants. No. Yeah, they're homespun. Oh, good lord! Yeah, I got them from a reenactor. Really? Yeah. And uh, you can see they're homespun and see with the buttons and everything. Wow. Lots of that's uh lots of Americans died with those type of no pants. No kidding. On. That is See the zipper's a fairly new invention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've owned a couple pairs of uh, jeans that had uh, the old button up fly. So that's Wow, the that's really and Over here I'll show you a so what's critical to the canoe business is white ash. It's very hard to get white ash now, and this is a this is the way it looks the way I buy it. See, see that board there? How beautiful that board is! Mm. It's I, it, I think it's one of the most beautiful of all the woods. And there were nine billion ash trees in North America. Green. Wow. Nine billion, and they're all dying. And that's what the wood looks like. And for a canoe builder, no ash, no business, because their inner gunnels and the outer gunnels and the keel are all ash. So that's in this where I store my wow. canoes as I'm uh, wow. working on them. Wow. i got to get in there and, 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 and check it out. But I, and because, we're within of masks, you, we're because of you, I've come up with a whole new idea for my end of my career. <laughs> Do I know what it is? Should you, I say it on film? You should. So, because of you talking about your solo canoe, yep. I've decided, so that I don't have a whole bunch of customers anymore, I'm 70 now, that I'm going to make just 14 foot 6 solo canoes, and I'm going to make it with a quarter inch ribs, which is lighter, and 1 eighth planking, and I can lighten it up in a lot of ways, and Johnny Gall's going to glass the outside. Okay. And then I'm still going to paint it, but the glass, like I could rent it to someone like you, and you wouldn't have to be as careful, right? But it'll be very light, and it'll oh, be man. beautiful. Like it's a, instead of paddling a linoleum rug down a river, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be looking at this cacophony of colors and smells. So you've ca you've just canvassed and and, you, and you've painted these. Yeah, that's a repair. The one on the oh, right, okay. The one on the right is a brand new canoe. Oh man, it's just gotta have its last coat of paint. I showed you the Boney Maroney new canoe, didn't I? Uh, no. Well, because all we did was take a ride together and it wasn't able to see anything. Oh, I'll bring the Boney Maroney out so you can see it. Oh, so beautiful. Look at that. What's that canoe weigh? 72 pounds. 72 pounds. And, this is for and here's a 70 camp. year old guy. This is for the camp up in the park, eh? Yep, okay. I rem Look at this. Is this ever gorgeous? And this is, I made this for my brother. It's going to be in his living memory. Wow. Oh, look at this. My brother now you traveled in Algonquin Park as a juvenile diabetic, right, when he was young? Okay. Now he's older and he's a shut-in, so I'm donating this to the camp in his memory and what he did all those years ago, having to take insulin on these tough trips right. and storing the insulin. So when he used to leave on the trip and come back, he, do you know the song, The Boney Maroney? Uh, are you telling me I about this? I've got a girl named Boney Maroney. Da, 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 da. She's as skinny as a stick of macaroni. I love her and she loves me, making love underneath. So anyways, that was his song, right? So we carved the Boney Maroney in the center thwart. There's a beautiful piece of black cherry. Look at that. And then it's written on the front too, right? And all the lyrics to the song are written They're underneath written the underneath thwart. It. So this is the type of canoe they go through Algonquin Park and in the camps. So there's now a guy what, in the what? bow, there's a guy in the middle, there's two packs and a guy in the stern. This is 16 feet 6, three people, and it goes like snot, and they never double or anything on the portage. See see up here, the says the And you just carried this on too. your, yep, oh look, at yep, I saw that on the, uh, when you were carrying it by. And you, what a beautiful boat. So what's, what, what? Like, uh, 
It's interior. What's, what are the lines like? What, what's the design on there? What's the name? This of is it, off the... of a Peterborough human uh, uh, Huron mold, and I had the mold copied onto this. I had the I had a canoe. Okay. And I had the mold made, and the molds in the shop. Wow. See, so this is white cedar. You stay where you are, and I'll show you what the white cedar looks like the way I bought it. I actually went and bought this after you were out on your trail. This okay. I got it in Killaloo, Ontario. Yep. And they say the white cedar in the Ottawa Valley of Ontario and Quebec. Canada is the best white cedar in the world for canoe building. Fantastic. Like the stuff from Minnesota and yep. Maine, it's not as good. Wow. Okay, so now how how much, um, how far will this go? What's that mean? Uh, meaning like how, like, how, um, how much planking or how much, how many ribs, uh, you need a hundred board feet of white cedar to make the mm -hmm. canoe. Okay. Man, that is one gorgeous canoe. Do you mind if I give that a, a hoist? You want to flip it up? It's yeah. seventy-two pounds. I love it. Uh, he thinks he thinks that a little, the, the little little guy like me can't. Okay. The top one. Jack just said he's a non-yoke person, and the reason is because of the tump line. Yeah, but when he hauled this out of here, he wasn't even using the tump line. Well, so because I'm not on a canoe trip, I'm just moving canoes back and forth. But this is my canoe, and you Look see the tump line in here. Oh wow! So what you do, and this is how all the people in the park care. Look at this. You flip the canoe up, and the tump line goes right on top of your head yep. where your the ball, the little ball of your cap is. So yep. You don't carry it here. Yeah. Right on the top. So I'm not only short. I'm very small boned, thin person. All right, we used to be thin, but, I'm, but I could carry when I was younger a canoe like this as far as a big guy, just with a yoke or uh, lashing his paddles or something. And that's all the voyageurs carried on their head, all the trappers. All right, everybody. Can, can I give this one a try? No, you're gonna. This one's really heavy. You can carry this one. Up. Well, what, what's this way? Ninety pounds. This is really heavy. 95. You know, my first canoe weighed 95 pounds. I'll have you know, mind you, I was hey, because of 25 you, pounds or something. Uh, because, 25 age. You could flip this one up because of you. I not only have a new business model. I do love the term <laughs> business model, but I also am going up to see your lake for a holiday for three days. I watched you paddle away, and I thought, oh boy. <laughs> so Peggy and I reserved September 9th, 10th, and 11th. Oh, that's fantastic! That's why I take that blue canoe and put chairs in it and everything. Awesome! Awesome! And tarp and we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, yeah, you're we'll going to stay, stay right on Cedar Lake. Yeah, we may stay at the same site for three nights, but we might say, well, let's go let's over move here. Around. Sure. Okay, All so right. you can put it from the other side. I got to flip it from the other side. Are you right handed? I'm, I'm usually, like, I usually do it this way. Okay, I'm actually so left handed. That way, then. Okay. See, and I usually don't have it elevated either, okay. but okay. But usually don't flip up 72 pounds either. Oh, I'm impressed. Yeah, I know you think I'm a, I'm a wuss, but I cut my teeth on heavier boats. Love it. It's balanced for lifting it on the other direction, but that's okay. You gotta balance it for that, plus having a paddle up in the front. So too. you mean it's balanced, so I should be carrying it the other direction. I should be facing the other way, facing yeah. backwards. With the, and then you can put your paddle in the bow too, and it's balanced. All right, we're gonna give that a try. Well, I mean, you've already done it. I mean, you proved your point. Well, I don't, I'm not trying to make a point here. No, but you proved that you can lift this at your age. Here's a guy 20 years older than me. You know what I don't know that I can do is put it down with grace and I am though. I'm going to. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I definitely, I felt some, it felt like I was 
Yeah, facing the wrong direction. Yeah. I didn't get that when you were saying it originally. See, and then another the nice thing is so you're going on a really, you got a picture of the tump line for me, right? Yeah. But you're carrying on a long portage and you're constantly looking up at all the beautiful wood. Like that's a black cherry stem. See the inner yeah. stem up there? Yeah. This well, the inner stem, see that's black cherry. You know, the scent alone. I make these little boxes where well, there's four sizes, right? Oh, okay. So right now, in that tank behind you, I'm boiling the ribs for it. All right. See, so the ribs will bend over here. Yep. And this is a form, so there's metal underneath where the ribs are going to go. Okay, he has Okay, so did you construct like did you weld this thing together? No, I bought it like you that. bought it like that. We, we, you just you just go on Amazon.com for to, to find one of those, do you? No, yeah, no problem. I, the guy fabricated it for me. But when I'm making a new canoe, I steam the ribs. And yeah. I got a big steamer, steam box. Yeah. So when I'm making these canoes because of you, I'm gonna do one <laughs> right away. I'm gonna do one like a right I'm next start, next project. I'm gonna start in September. Uh, I'm almost so that's one by five by eight down yeah, there, and, and you say that board costs ten bucks. And I get eight ribs out of that board. That okay. board's perfectly clear. I yep. get eight ribs out of it okay ten bucks eight I ribs know. so you're telling me the materials cost on one of these is well, not the, the big part it's 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 well of course it's all the labor two hundred dollars serious for the for the cedar and you have your ash and your canvas and right filler and paint. probably be about seven or eight hundred dollars for everything tax are very expensive the brass tacks come from oh, yeah. Maine. Where's my, where's my old bucket? I want to get these planks to sit down. But so like when we're building a canoe and we're on a tricky bend and stuff like that, mm -hmm. oh, this. you iron everything. Say if it's, you know, a lot of the planks are very tricky. Okay. And that, this is what so, everybody does. Like that first plank on a canoe is a 180 degree bend. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, check it out. So I haven't done this for a while, so I miss mold. So I look confused because I am. Look at that. Just bent it down like nothing. Just good. Look at that. So it's 42 ribs on a new canoe, and it takes a, takes an hour and a half to do it. 42 ribs. So you just need ribs. a ton of clamps and a ton of shims. So you or... tack them in. Okay. It's because your inner gunnels are already in in your stem, and you tack them in. It takes an hour, or when I drank, you used to take three beers. <laughs> Maybe five. Maybe a six pack. <laughs> These are really tricky to make, and the smaller something is, the harder it is to make. Whether it's a wanigan or a canoe, like a real small canoe, not the canoe that you're you're going to take out, or at least try it. I want you to at least absolutely try it, and you'll know what I was talking about. Is in fact, you'll never ever want to go down the river in a linoleum rug again. <laughs> And then I put the tacks in and they clinch themselves, right? 
the dig. Right. So the tax go in. Like, can the tax go in right now? Yeah, they gotta go right. They now. gotta go right now because if you do it another time, what would happen? The wood would split. It would be too dry. Right. Anything that I find interesting, I put up on the walls. Like if it's in a book, I rip it out and just put it up on the yeah. walls. Or so like, uh, there's Churchill. There's a guy who was a canoe builder just up the road named Clarence Bogues. There's Peter Zosky. There's Gilmore, Gilmore of Gilmore's al albums. That's me playing Hamlet. No! That's me what? playing Hamlet. That's the <laughs> honey year was that? Wait a minute. <laughs> this is the Cleaver family. Are you aware of Leave It to Beaver? Uh, I just know the name. I don't know anything more oh, than that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Too your audience. Uh, yeah. Is other people going to well, see this? What what audience? You mean my 69 subscribers? So uh, no one else is going to see this, right? Oh, well, very few people. Let's go. What is what is this? Anyways, this I is, don't have to show it. So that's Johnny Beaver. Carson. Oh, okay, on his first leave it to Beaver Punch. Yeah. Johnny Carson. Oh, on Johnny his first Carson. Time. This is a canoe that I gave to Camp Pathfinder in my mother's memory, and it broke in half instantly up in Tomogamy when they missed a portage. Oh man! Went over a falls. And that's both <laughs> That's okay. a nine-foot canoe that I make. That's Mickey wow. Rooney and Judy Garland. Hey, here's one of my favorites. My favorite actress is Shirley MacLaine. There she is with her brother. This is <laughs> Ulysses S. Grant uh, writing his memoirs. Seriously? There's Audrey Hepburn. Oh, anyways, there's the guy that used to run the Brent store before Jake before did. Before Jake. What now? What vintage and are we here? And then there's Jake, right? And then there's Jake. Okay, you got them side by side. Well, is that 1959? Is that what that says on it? That's when the picture was and taken. And who is the guy? His name is Jerry McGawkey. Oh, I've heard of him. And there's a, there's a picture of my... Uh, with all the ribs bent on a canoe mold. Oh, gorgeous. There's Mark Twain, the greatest American, white American of all time. White male American. Now, why, why do you say uh, Mark Twain is the greatest white because American they of had all a, time? They had a contest for four countries. Oh, okay. And the Canadians picked uh, uh, Tommy Douglas. Yeah. But it could have been uh, David Thompson. Right. And the Americans picked Ronald Reagan, and I put a lot of thought into who it actually should have been. Oh, and and I you're... think he's the first person to write in the American vernacular. He uh, was famous for 70 years. Like Lincoln, Lincoln only became Lincoln the last year he was alive. He was going to send all the slaves back to Madagascar. And then he changed his tune. But, I did not uh, know I, that. It's just my opinion that Mark Twain, and I defy, and then the Italians picked Leonardo, but it could have been. Uh, could have been Michelangelo, just as easy. And the uh, the uh, ridiculous Brits picked uh, Churchill, and it should have been Shakespeare. Churchill's one of my three most overrated men of the 20th century. And yet he's up on your wall. Yeah, well, I got Kennedy on the wall, too. He's one of the most overrated also. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh my, my mother would have one. words with you on that. Who? My mother. Well, she just was nothing. He was a he was a feckless. What did uh, uh, Johnson said when Johnson was the majority leader of the Senate and uh, Kennedy was one of the senators? He said he was a feckless dilettante who never showed up for work. Wow. So uh, just so you understand, this is the way it goes with Jack. You start. You're talking about canoes. You're loving it. And then somehow he finds a way to get on to politics that yeah. you didn't even know. Politics or the environment, the environment I get. Both of them are worthwhile just for the privilege of uh, talking to the guy and touring this, so for sure. When I arrived at Jack's shop, I had no intention of making a film about my visit. All I was after was some added content for my video series on the meanest link. But when I got home and reviewed the footage, it was obvious the experience had made a tremendous impact on me, and it deserved its own video. Yes, the camera's unsteady, the point of view perspective smacks strongly of amateurism, and a lot of my questions and responses show my head wasn't in the game for any kind of proper expose. But in the end I decided all of that was part of it, that my excitement and the feeling of being starstruck was just as central to the film as Jack's work 
the ornamentation on the walls, the scent of fresh cedar and varnish, and most especially the indomitable character of the man himself. It was truly humbling to be so welcomed and indulged, and I'm deeply thankful to Jack for the time he gave me. I'm even more thankful to be able to call Jack and Peggy a great pair of new friends, key figures in the paddling community that surrounds Algonquin Park and embodies everything it means to so many people.